The sea otter in Hydra Lutris is the heaviest mustelid and the smallest marine mammal. They're fucking adorable, yo! While the sea otter can and does on occasion walk on land, they spend the majority of their life at sea, feeding on clams, snails, scallops, sea urchins, and that sort of thing. They dive beneath the water to grab them, storing them in pouch-like pockets. Aww. They're pretty unlike every other marine mammal in quite a few ways. They have no blubber or particularly insulating skin to keep them warm in the waters they frequent, the northern Pacific Rim. Instead, they rely on thick fur to insulate them and keep warm. They have up to 150,000 strands of hair per square centimeter, the densest fur of any animal. Unlike other marine mammals, they catch their prey using their hands, not their jaws, and in a rather iconic image, will lay on their back on the surface while eating, using their chest like an adorable dinner plate. Aww. They have to eat quite a bit too in order to keep up with their high metabolic rate. A sea otter eats 25-38% to 38 of its own body weight in food each day in order to counteract the cold temperatures they live in. Sea otters are fairly complex animals in terms of their behavior. They're one of the few mammal species that uses tools. In order to open hard shells, or probably particularly stubborn shellfish off a rock, the sea otter will strike their prey with rocks at observed rates as high as 3 blows a second. That's pretty fast. Sea otters, like many mustelid species, form social communes of sorts. While adults hunt alone, they tend to mingle and rest together in single-sex groups that have, adorably, been dubbed rafts. These rafts typically contain between 10 to 100 animals, sleeping on the surface while holding paws. Aww. The largest raft ever recorded was a massive 2,000 sea otters. I, I can't deal with that. Sea otters don't form long-term reproductive relationships. They tend to stick to same-sex groupings, and the females often outnumber the males. As a result, sea otters are polygynous. Males form many temporary pairings with females. The result of these pairings is typically a single pup, with twins rather rarely. A mother otter with multiple pups is quite rare. Pups tend to mature to independent juveniles within a year. Female sea otters have quite the reputation as good mothers, helped by the fact that they're so damn adorable. Female sea otters give their pups almost constant attention when they're not foraging, cradling them on their chest to keep them out of the water, grooming their fur, teaching them to how to start foraging. They've even been observed adopting orphan pups. And when the pup prematurely dies, mother sea otters have been known to continue to carry their pup on their chest for days, which is adorably depressing. A depressingable, if you will. The sea otter is rated as endangered by the IUCN and is protected throughout its range. It's thought that it once had a population as high as 300,000 in the Pacific, which began to dwindle in the 1700s due to the fur trade. While the population once was as low as a couple thousand, they have since rebounded, and it's believed that the global population is in the range of about 107,000. The sea otter has actually been a very useful tool for marine conservation groups, given how fucking adorable they are. They are keenly affected by things like oil spills due to their limited ability to move away from them, and the oil completely eliminates their fur's ability to retain air, and thus keep them rather warm. Not to mention the fact that oil just poisons them outright. When the Exxon Valdez oil spill occurred on March 24, 1989, thousands and thousands of sea otters were killed in the Prince William Sound in the Gulf of Alaska. Their behavior and appearance did much to garner public sympathy and draw media coverage to the catastrophe. As a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service spokesman wrote, As a playful, photogenic, innocent bystander, the sea otter epitomized the role of the victim. Cute and frolicsome sea otters suddenly in distress, oiled, frightened, and dying in a losing battle with the oil. The fact that sea otters typically have a very specific and geographically isolated range means that ecological disasters in those localities can completely destroy local populations as well. It's also apparent that in populations near the mainland United States, parasitic infections transmitted to them via sewage hospital has been severely impacting the population, with the feline Toxoplasmus gondii being transmitted through fecal waste to the vulnerable sea otter. 
Still, the sea otter is doing better than it has in the past, and the adorable charisma of the sea otter has done a lot to drive people to support conservation causes worldwide. Because everybody loves the sea otters. They're just too fucking cute! Ugh.